Welcome back. This is part two of my 180 gallon reef tank equipment tour. If you haven't seen part one, I'll post a link in the description and I encourage you to go check it out. Uh, in this part, I'll be going through all of the equipment that I have down here in the sump area and you know, a little bit of background story uh, behind each of the components that I've selected to run in here. Uh, what you'll notice is you know, towards the end of the video, um, it sort of ends abruptly. Uh, my camera battery had died while I was recording and looking at the time stamp of you know, the length of this video, it seemed like a good point to end this one and I'll pick up with part three uh, you know, in the next day or two. So hope you enjoy. All of this down here, I have uh, put this together myself. Uh, this is you know, based on many, many hours of researching, watching YouTube videos, um, and you know, trial and error. Uh, I've learned you know, a lot of stuff. I had an old tank before. I had a 90 gallon with you know, a sump which I had purchased from somebody on Craigslist, so most of it was set up for me. But when I moved over to the 180, uh, I took everything that I had learned and applied it to this tank here. So I guess we can get started on the left-hand side here. Uh, as you can see, the glass aquarium there, that is a 40-gallon breeder, and that's the size sump that I'm using uh, on this 180-gallon reef. Uh, this was just your standard uh, Aquion 40 gallon breeder that you get at Petco. I picked it up during their dollar a gallon sale and I turned this into my sump. So I went to a local glass shop and had them cut the glass baffles for me. I gave them the dimensions that I wanted, had to make it out of quarter inch glass. Um, and I took that and just siliconed the panes uh, into the positions that I wanted. And it's turned out really well. So I have my first chamber on the left is my skimmer and return section. There in the middle is a small refugium section. Uh, then after that, it goes down to a bubble trap and into the last chamber is my return section. Okay, so we can get a closer look here. What I have is the first section I'm showing you is the return or the overflow section. So. Those two red pipes there are coming down from each of the corner overflows. Uh, the first one is almost a straight shot. Comes straight down uh, into a filter sock. And then the other one goes up and then way across over to the other overflow and ends up in this filter sock. Uh, as you can see, the socks are dirty right now and they're beginning to overflow. So I need to swap them out and put some clean socks into there. Okay, after the water comes in, uh, obviously you see the skimmer here. So this is a Reef Octopus Regal 200 SSS. That's the Space Saving Skimmer model. Uh, this thing is awesome. Uh, it's a really big skimmer. It's well oversized for the tank that I have, but I am glad that I went with this one. Um, this was recommended to me by a friend of mine, and he says, you know, go ahead and get yourself the, you know, a very big skimmer, and you won't be disappointed, and I am happy that I took that advice. Uh, this thing is really cool. It's, it's like I said, it's big. Uh, it's got the pump is inside of the, uh, I don't know what you call that, the bubble chamber. Uh, so it's a DC pump, uh, which is nice because that keeps it you know, pretty compact for the size that this thing is. Uh, the DC pump has a controller on it right there, so you can run this at five different speeds. Uh, it also has some uh, feed modes on it, so you can hit the pause button for 15 minutes or 60 minutes if you want. Uh, to be honest, I never really use any of that. Uh, you, I turn the thing on and I turn it off. The variable speed was quite helpful in the very beginning. When I was first setting this thing up, I could just run it at a very low speed because um, anybody that's broken in a skimmer knows that, you know, for the first, uh, who, who knows how many days, <laughs> but it could be a while before the thing breaks in. It just keeps overflowing. Uh, so having the ability to dial back on the you know, water going in uh, was helpful. Uh, but ever since then, I've just had this thing running full blast. Okay, also in my first chamber, um, 
which you're not really going to be able to see. Uh, well, first of all, there is a, a power head in here which comes on uh, periodically uh, just to blow any detritus that happens to be in here back up into the water column so maybe the skimmer can pick it up uh, and you know, get it out of the tank or you know, just have it flow over into one of the other ways of getting out of here. But also back there, which is hard to make out where that white tube is coming out of, there is a MaxJet 1200, and that pump is being used uh, to power my dual media reactor, which I run GFO and carbon in here. Uh, at the moment, my GFO, I don't know if you can see it, it is tumbling okay. That should be doing better than that. Um, what I tend to do is, you know, watch that. When that starts to slow down, I know that my carbon is probably the culprit. Uh, these sponges and everything starts to get clogged up. And I'll take that out and you know, clean it out a bit. Uh, but, you know, I'll usually do that twice before I will end up replacing uh, the, you know, the carbon in there or the GFO. Uh, I typically let these things run. Uh, the carbon I change maybe about once every month and the GFO maybe once every two months. So it seems to work okay for me. As you can see from the test results, uh, the nutrients are ultra low at this point. I don't know if that's too low, but uh, seems to be working okay for me. Uh, so in addition to powering this dual media reactor, there's a, a split on that line. Uh, and if you can see this clear tube also is coming off of that Maxajet pump. And that goes all the way over to here. And this here, what we're looking at is my refugium. So in addition to my 40 gallon sump, which I have here, I have also plumbed in a 10 gallon refugium. Uh, and this is working out really, really well for me. Um, originally, the plan was to have my sump and this middle section be you know, the refugium. And over here, I was going to have uh, my auto top off you know, container and just you know, keep filling that up with fresh water and you know, let my ATO put it back into the sump. Uh, but as I was building this system, uh, I changed my mind and you know, you might notice there is no auto top-off reservoir in here. And that's because my auto top-off reservoir is right down there below this. There's a hole in the floor and directly underneath it here is where my saltwater mixing station is. And that line goes right into the freshwater reservoir and I have a pump in there which brings it back up. So. There is my auto top off. I use a Tunzi uh, auto top off controller. And there it is right there. And I have my level marked right here. So whenever that thing gets triggered, uh, water gets pumped up from the basement directly into here. So that's why I had all this extra room over here. So I used this 10 gallon aquarium, which was going to be my auto top off. And that's now a uh, well, I was going to say secondary refugium, but that's my primary refugium. And there is so much life in here. Let's see if I can find anybody for us. But there are so many little, oh, somebody, copepods and amphipods and little worms and snails and all kinds of stuff just living in there. And flatworms, of course. They've got my share of pests, uh, which I need to deal with. But, and I have a ton of macroalgae growing in there. Now this is mainly just uh, different types of chlorpyrla, if I'm pronouncing that right, chlorpyrla. Uh, it's the green leafy stuff. And I've also got some other types in there that sort of look like a fern. So there's those two are the main types growing in here. And there's also some grape, red grape and green grape algae growing in there. And there is some Cheeto in there still. I thought I had weeded it all out because the Cheeto just sort of chokes everything. And it also takes a few strands and it grows right back. Uh, so in here is all of the you know, plant type algae. And in here I keep all of the Cheeto. And it just was just kind of, you know, I had some, so I threw it in here and you know, it's working. So it's kind of the secondary refugium. So the water is coming up across 
into my refugium and I built this little overflow box here and the water just overflows back into my return section. A nice little cycle. Uh, all right, so coming back over this side. So then water flows over you know, this baffle into my secondary refugium. What you see here, I just have some rubble and some bio home media in there. And this thing has also got a share of uh, microfauna living in here. I don't know if we'll see any at this angle, but they're definitely in there. Uh, the water goes through the bubble trap. So see here, I have some filter floss just to keep the Cheeto from coming through there into my return section. And laying down here in the bottom of the bubble trap, I have two heaters. These are, I believe they're 250 watt heaters. So got two heaters laying down there so the water passes over them on its way to the return, uh, which there is a drilled outlet over there, which goes into my Hawaki pump. That is rated at 822 gallons an hour, which then goes back up and splits to each overflow. Uh, also in here, you'll see this small pump. Uh, this is the pump which is powering my UV sterilizer. So that comes up through that clear tube, back down into there, into my 25 watt Emperor Aquatics UV sterilizer. And that'll come back through here. Now this, if you looked at this stats, um, we'll say it's a bit undersized for this tank. Uh, this was from my 90 gallon aquarium. I think this thing says it's rated up to 110 or 120 gallons. Uh, but my camera's dead. At this point, the battery has died in my camera while I was filming. So looking at the length of the video so far, I decided, you know, maybe it'd be best to break this into three parts, uh, or at least three parts. I'll you know, make, definitely make another part to finish up where I've left off here. And... You know, maybe when I'm done doing all of the equipment tour, uh, go through all of the different corals in the tank. I haven't uh, done that yet. And, you know, let you know what's in here and, you know, how things are doing and, you know, uh, any plans that I have for the future. So uh, hopefully you have enjoyed this second part of my equipment tour for this 180 gallon reef. Uh, if you're interested in you know, future videos, um, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And, you know, if you like what you saw, give me the thumbs up and you know, leave some comments. I love uh, reading what you guys have to say. And, you know, if you have any suggestions or improvements I could do, um, you know, leave them below. Uh, I'm open to suggestions. I'm just learning this hobby, just like everyone else. And I know there's a ton of different ways to do things. And, uh, you know, maybe some ways are better than others. I don't know. So I look forward to hearing what you have to say. And I guess I'll just uh, you know, end this one here, and I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching.